At the conclusion of Metal Gear Solid 4's development, Konami and Hideo Kojima chose to create and invest in their next proprietary engine. There are many potential benefits of doing this. Game development would hopefully be much shorter and more efficient, the developers would be able to make their games for multiple platforms, and of course, it would be able to showcase incredible graphics. The name of this proprietary engine? The Fox Engine. The development of the engine began after Metal Gear Solid 4, and because of that game having issues being exclusive only to PlayStation, Konami and Kojima knew for the future they could not repeat that mistake. So when the time came to release the next Metal Gear game on multiple platforms, Kojima and his team at Konami needed an engine and game that could work well on multiple platforms. Metal Gear Solid 4 is famously stuck on PlayStation 3 because of it utilizing the PS3's cell processor, meaning it cannot work on other consoles. This sort of situation could not happen again. Thus, the Fox engine and its workflows would be built to be compatible with all consoles, as well as PC. The first glances we got to see of the engine in action were Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes back in 2013, as well as the horror demo PT in 2014. Though both games were essentially demos, both were impressive experiences both in visuals and performance. But it was not until Metal Gear Solid 5 in 2015 we got to see just how impressive the Fox engine was. An open world game looking this good on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One was already impressive. Even though it was open world, nothing seemed to be compromised. The visual fidelity, minute details, and the lighting all look incredible. And as impressive as the visuals are, that's not the crazy part. This open world game, looking like this, ran at 1080p 60fps, which was unheard of. Even by the end of that console generation, very few open world games looked and performed like Metal Gear Solid 5. Then there's the scalability, which was excellent. Metal Gear Solid 5 looked phenomenal on PS4 and Xbox One but it was also scaled back to work on PS3 and Xbox 360, and actually ran decently enough for gamers to enjoy. Additionally, the Fox engine was also versatile. PT was an incredibly linear experience, while Metal Gear Solid 5 was open world. All the while, Pro Evolution Soccer, a sports series of games, also utilized the Fox engine. Not just any engine can be used as dynamically as the Fox engine was, and it's quite impressive to see how many different types of games ran on the engine. Moving on, let's talk more specifically about the engine. Even though it's proprietary, Kojima and others spoke extensively about the details of this engine at GDC back in 2013. A lot of that information is incredibly interesting to talk about here, and I want to give a shout out to this Eurogamer article which helps explain a lot of what was discussed. But before we get into the specifics, it is important to note that it was the team as well as the engine working in unison that allowed these techniques to work as well as they did. The developers are just as important as the tools and engine they use. So without further ado, let's talk about the specifics of the Fox engine. The key word that represents this engine? Photorealism. For Kojima to pursue such realism, the engine had to be innovative. There are three different elements of the Fox engine to discuss. Lighting, deferred rendering, and physically based rendering. Let's start by talking about lighting. The most important factor for the engine and why games look so good is because of the lighting. The Fox engine used a technique called linear space lighting. Though this is a subtle process, the end results achieve more natural looking lights and shadows in game. If you're looking for more of an explanation, linear space lighting essentially takes into account higher than natural light and dark contrast of the average screen. It then provides gamma correction accordingly to achieve the more natural lighting. Additionally, there are also other lighting processes used, like light attenuation to portray more realistic lighting. Basically, the lighting looks really good. Let's move on to the second element. The Fox engine used a specific type of rendering called deferred rendering. But to understand deferred rendering, it would be helpful to briefly explain traditional rendering. So, how traditional rendering worked at the time was that each object would be rendered individually. This traditional process is also called forward rendering. There are then different types of forward rendering like single pass or multi pass, but for purposes of this video, I'm not going to go into them. Kojima's pursuit of photorealism placed large importance in lighting, which meant the traditional rendering process mentioned would not be the most efficient. Instead, the team would use another process called deferred rendering. 
Essentially, deferred rendering adds an extra step to the rendering process. Instead of texture information and other data being rendered and then immediately used, like in traditional rendering, the texture information in deferred rendering is rendered and then stored, specifically in a location called the geometry buffer, aka the G buffer. So, when the specific object or scene needs such information, it will be immediately ready to go. But more importantly, deferred rendering separates the rendering of geometry from the application of lighting. Now at this point you're probably asking, what the f am I talking about? Honestly, it's all very confusing. So let's get basic and use an example. Using traditional or forward rendering means five lights would equal five renders. However, using deferred rendering, the five lights are rendered once as geometry. The specific lighting information stored in the G-Buffer, such as color and other data, is then applied to the lights. This is where deferred rendering is more efficient, because in this example, you only need to render all the lights once. But just in case you still don't understand what I'm saying, let's use a real-world example. Let's say you want to turn on 10 lights as quickly as possible. One method is turning 10 lights on by flipping 10 switches. The other method is turning the 10 lights on by flipping one switch. In this case, you'd obviously want to flip the one switch, as it's easier and faster. So, going back to rendering, the computational cost of lighting is much less when using deferred rendering, which is very beneficial when lighting is incredibly important to the game. Then there is the third element of the Fox engine, which is physically based rendering. Here, the development team used the software PhotoScan to photograph and scan real-world objects into the game as highly detailed as possible. Textures specifically are photographed at a high exposure and are then edited by the team's artists. The high exposure allows the linear light information to be retained, which essentially means it is closer to how a human eye would actually see the texture. All of these processes and techniques working in tandem with each other resulted in a spectacular-looking game. And then, Konami abandoned the Fox engine. You gotta be kidding me. Though we do not have a clear reason why, there are many potential and likely answers. During Metal Gear Solid V's development, Kojima and Konami had a very public falling out. After Kojima left and the game ultimately released, Konami for many years was not really focused on games, as it had other businesses bringing in money. It really only sold the Pro Evolution Soccer games and released Metal Gear Survive in 2018, which was essentially a cash grab. When the time came for development teams to start developing for the next generation of consoles, Konami announced it would be abandoning the Fox engine for Unreal Engine 5. Good. That's one less loose end. Though not much more was said than this, we can assume a few things. Unreal Engine 5 as an engine is likely much easier to work on than the Fox engine, as UE5 was built to be more user-friendly since the engine could be licensed out to any developer to use. Also, any new developer at Konami would need to learn the Fox engine, so the barrier to entry was higher. Konami likely asked itself, why hire a new developer and have them go through all this training on the Fox engine, when instead you can just require developers to know Unreal Engine 5 before they apply? That way, you don't really have to teach them anything, and it's more cost-efficient. Further, the Fox engine at that point was nearly a decade old. Looking at Metal Gear Survive, the game looked no better than Metal Gear Solid V that came out years before. Though there are likely a lot of reasons for this, such as budget or developers not being as familiar with the engine, it seems obvious that Konami stopped investing in developers to work on and update the engine. If that was the case, then the Fox engine was quite outdated compared to other engines making modern games. So, if Konami had to decide between hiring a bunch of engine developers to update the Fox engine versus switching to the widely popular Unreal Engine, it's an easy decision to make. Unreal Engine 5 would be easier to learn and likely far cheaper to develop on long term. Thus, the Fox engine was laid to rest. Ultimately, we'll never know the specific reason Konami stopped using the Fox engine. All we do know is that it likely came down to money, like it always does. Unfortunately, you get what you pay for. When Metal Gear Solid Delta was announced as an Unreal Engine 5 game, everyone knew what was coming. Heavy upscaling, stuttering, and poor performance. Then it released, and the results were heavy upscaling, stuttering, and poor performance. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. And what makes it worse is that Metal Gear Solid Delta is linear and made up of separate areas that are not seamlessly connected. Given that the Fox engine excelled at its open world in Metal Gear Solid 5, imagine how well it could have ran Metal Gear Solid Delta if Konami put the effort in to still work with the engine. It's sad because the Fox engine had great potential. Metal Gear Solid 5 showed what the engine was capable of achieving, and more games using the Fox engine would have been awesome to see. Yet, like so many other proprietary engines, the Fox engine was abandoned. And looking at Metal Gear Solid Delta and other Unreal Engine 5 games, it's hard to say abandoning the Fox engine was the right choice. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.